Hi lovies. I have a note to self today. A lot of times we have issues with people and we want to communicate, but we think it's pointless because they're not going to hear us. They're not going to understand our reality. And I, I've noticed that's a theme lately with a couple of my clients. Uh, most of them being younger, like, you know, 18, 19, 20. And I think as women in particular, we learn how to communicate over time. Um, initially, I think we're afraid what people will think or say. So when I ask my younger female clients, you know, what, why they don't want to voice their concerns um, to their parent, for example, and they'll say, well, they just won't listen, I won't be heard. And the idea of not being heard is so strong that it prevents them from clearing communication or having a conversation. Now, what I want to say and what I will say to them is, and what I'm going to say to you, is, is are you communicating to get a specific result or are you communicating because you want to stand up for yourself? Is it about you or, or about them? And I think that's a really good qualifier because if it's because you want a specific outcome, then probably you shouldn't communicate with that person. That's, you know, we, we can't control other people. Probably the result that we're specifically wanting may not happen. And there we, therefore we're left feeling disappointed and rejected or whatever. But if you go into the conversation with, I am, I'm owning this. I want to stand up for myself. I am responsible for for clearing my part of the relationship up and for me to do that, for me not to hold resentments or be angry or have an attitude. I need to stick up for myself and be responsible for how I'm feeling and present that in a in a healthy functional way. And that looks like I statements. So something I work with clients on a lot is when you um, don't show up on time. I feel like I'm not important enough for you to meet me at a certain time. Therefore, I feel angry. You know, I feel resentful. I feel insignificant and not, not important. And in the future, I would like you to start, start showing up on time. Now, that person has, you know, may have a history of not showing up on time for years. So I'm not expecting a particular outcome. I said that I wanted an outcome, but really I was in it for, for, for example, for me, for me being responsible, me sharing how I felt and allowing them the opportunity to receive it and change their behavior or not. Maybe in the future, what I'll have to do is meet them. However late they're on average, I'm going to show up that much late and just put it in my mind. If I want to continue the relationship and this is really bothering me, I need to change something about myself in order to be in the relationship, which looks like I'm just going to figuratively set my, my time backwards 30, 30 minutes or ahead 30 minutes so that I can meet them. Uh, when they they show up. So um, I would invite you to start asking yourself, um, am I wanting a specific outcome when I communicate? And is that keeping me small and, and not wanting to share how I'm feeling? I notice a lot of young couples come in, they're just starting to live with each other and they're both fearing abandonment. And so they don't ever have hard conversations, which look like, hey, when you don't do the dishes, I'm left doing the dishes and I'm starting to feel resentful. Now, fast forward seven years from now, that relationship is probably not gonna hold together very well. It's probably gonna be on the fringes because relationships where we don't have communication or effective communication or even communication at all, results in us starting to feel resentful and angry. 
And that's hard to make a relationship work when we have layers of that. So learning at a young age to stand up for yourself and have a voice is really important. And trying to negotiate um, wants and needs in that space. Now, another couple that I've been working with, um, you know, is really important for, for them to have their emotional and safety needs met. Some people who don't feel emotionally safe in the relationship will do this tit for tat or really defensive kind of mode happening. So if I just say, hey, have you seen my glasses? The other person would respond, I haven't done anything to your glasses. Why do you always assume that I have taken your glasses? That sort of thing. So we're walking on eggshells. That's because we don't feel emotionally safe in the relationship. So how we start doing that is we start setting up boundaries, which look like um, what I need to feel emotionally safe in this relationship is I need you to not yell at me. I need you not to raise your voice. Then my partner might say, well, I need you not to corner me if we get into an argument. I need you to back off and give me physical space. So now we're talking about feelings of safety and emotional needs in the relationship. For me to hang in here and communicate with you, this is what I need. I need to feel respected. I need to have a voice, but I also need to, you to respect me in this. And so the, there's a conversation. So in a couple relationship, we would take turns. So I would say when Thing that I need to feel emotionally safe is don't raise your voice. Then my partner would add add one onto the paper and they would say, hey, I need not to be cornered. Another one might be, I need time to cool down before I want to reconnect with you. And they say, fine, but I needed to come back at some point to finish this conversation. Okay, right. So I always say the person who needs the most like time off, they need to be the one to initiate coming back. Um, so that's on them. I, you know, I've seen people take seven days to come back. That's a super avoidant personality, and we can talk about anxious and avoidant on another day. But um, I think that's pretty unhealthy. I think within 24 hours, depending on the conversation, I think you can come back and reconnect. So these are just, you know, we take turns writing down guidelines for what we need to feel emotionally safe in the relationship. Now that I have these in place, I can start start using ice demons and know that you're going to receive it. Um, you're going to take it. You're not going to yell at me. You're not going to run away. Like we've had this framework built. So now I can feel safe to communicate what I need to communicate in a healthy, functional way. These are just thoughts for the day for me, things that are co coming up with my clients and with myself and how to meet our own emotional needs. And I, again, the, the, the thought for the day is, Am I being small? Why am I not communicating? Am I afraid of abandonment and rejection? What's stopping me from having a voice? Do I want a result? Or is this about just me owning my stuff and needing to, to feel responsible and respecting myself in order to have a conversation? So explore all these ideas and I hope it's helpful. Bye, lovies. Have a good day.